Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to teach you how to get your dog as calm as Mr. Monty here. Now you all know that Ruger is pretty crazy so I'm going to show you the trick to get your dog just as calm and at peace as Monty. And the first thing you gotta do, you just gotta shake the crazy out of him. You just gotta shake it out of him. Just shake it out. Get him. Lose your crazy boy. Lose it. Okay, that's not the real first step, and that's not what this video is about. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rubes. I'm sorry. <sighs> that is how you actually make your dog crazy. <laughs> Rubes all amped up now. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. Um, so first of all, I want to say that there's not going to be any crazy outdoor video this week. I know I said I was going to, but just one thing led to another, and it didn't happen. So instead, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about building your... Uh, gear arsenal for camping and whatnot. So, as you can see, there are certain things when I go camping that I'm always grabbing for, and I always bring out. One of these things is ye old great great, and this pot right here, and this pan. Now, these items are not a sort of set of anything. Um, when you're building your gear arsenal, it doesn't just happen overnight. You don't need to go buy the fanciest, schmanciest gear there is, the, the best iron cast skillet, whatever, the best aluminum pan, it doesn't matter. You don't need to do that. Um, basically how it happens is over time, you're going to get little things you like and they just happen to work together. Now sometimes, you guys have given me a lot of stuff, sometimes you're not going to always see me bring that stuff out because I've just got a set of certain things that work. And For example, I'm going to show you my cookware here. Now. Here's my cookware. This pan, specifically, was one of the first pieces of gear me and Fung got for camping. This was given to us by her boss, some worker that just wasn't outdoorsy. She's like, here's some random pots and pans. And this thing has made its way into our camping arsenal. Now here's my stove. This is the Trangia 28 mini stove. And let me just show you why this stuff all fits together. So. Here's my, uh, this is a premise pan, I think. So here's this pan. Now here's this other pan I got. I don't know what it is. It nests right inside of it perfectly. Then I just take my little uh, windscreen right there. That fits right in there. Then you got this pan. Squish this down. It nests right inside. Here's my little stove. And that's right inside that. Close that up. Now I've got this random, see how it's all nesting. Now I've got this random uh, sack here that just fits over all this when it's all put together. Mind you, it barely fits. There you go. Then I just take my knife you always see me use, throw it in there, my spatula, my little cheap, cheap, cheap spatula I just got online, and my spork. And there you go, boom. That is my cookware. Now this is heavy, and you saw all that stuff nested inside each piece. Now that that's not something you can, uh, I'm sure there's cook sets out there that you can just go and buy but you know you might like this pan better th this little pot better and it doesn't have to be expensive that's the main thing here this stuff you know I got that one pot handed to me my stove was 30 bucks you know the other pan everything um, it just all happens to fit together and this did not happen overnight this was just with time uh, you know I purchased one thing and I was like oh wow that fits right into that perfect you know that fits right into that and this is the best way to get all that stuff compacted into this little amount and that's a lot of cookware right there you know that's a stove with a bowl and a pan two big pans and a boiling pot for water and you know and that's what I mean by just not building your gear overnight you know just give it time find things you like you're gonna find things you don't like things will work, things will fit, and it all depends on how you pack your bags and how, you know, things fit together. Mine definitely didn't happen overnight, and that's just how it is. And another thing is, you don't need expensive stuff. This right here 
is the sleeping bag that I use. Now you see me camping all, all, the, all winter. This is the only bag I use. What this thing is, is a military surplus extreme cold bag. Um, and as you can see, there's patches on it and it's used. Now this thing is awesome. I love this thing. It only costs 60 to 80 bucks. So if you've got a military surplus, call around and you're looking to get into winter camping, try to find one of these bags. This is the best thing I could ask for. I didn't even purchase this myself. Jake actually was just like, when we started, when he started getting me into winter camping and he showed me for the first time, I was a little cold on my first night and he's just like, Hey, like I'm going by the military surplus. You want me to grab you one of those extreme cold bags and maybe a bivy sack? And I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. It's cheap, right? And he's like, yep. And just grab me this. And ever since, um, this is pretty much all I've used. And the only problem with this bag is its bulkiness. That's the one drawback to this thing right here. Let me just show you. What are you doing under there? See, Monty's a nice, nice helper roll on her back. I'm not doing this the most efficiently because I just rolled it on Monty, so it's kind of, it's kind of extra bulky. No, that's, that's too bulky. We need to redo this. Doing it back here. So here's this bag rolled up pretty darn tight. That's about as tight as I can get it. I mean, I could get it a little bit tighter, but that's about it right there. You can see that this thing is quite bulky and it's good for teaching rugs a lesson or two. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Rooks. But yeah, you see, you see me use this bag all winter long, and that's why half the time you see me pack. Monty, it's okay. He's like, I'm going to have this. He just gets a little. You, you get a little fire under his ass, and he's crazy. He's crazy. Right, Ruger, 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 leave it alone. Ruger, stop. Ruger, stop. Monty, it's okay, come here. Come on, Monty. Up, 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 up. Steal the spot. Good boy. All right, Ruger. Leave him be. Oh. Okay. Ruger! Okay. All right, Monty. Calm down, children. Calm down, children. Okay. Where was I? Um. I, f I forgot what I was talking about. So like I was saying, when you see me bring out a big dry bag for an overnighter, and I've, it looks like I've just got an arsenal of stuff, look at how big that sleeping bag is. This thing takes up so much space in that dry bag, and then on top of that, I put in Monty's sleeping bag in a stuff sack, and that's compressed a lot, and then his wool blanket, that right there takes up 60% of that bag space right off the bat. So if I bring a different bag, and you know, I'll put that on the outside if it's extremely cold and it's not gonna get wet, um, that's, I'll bring that, but I guess with all that being said is, you know, until I get uh, an expensive $800 down bag, I'm gonna be using that bag right there, and that thing is awesome, I love it, it's cheap. Go get one if you're new to winter camping, that'll serve its purpose. I'm 6'4", and it was a little snug at first, but it eventually works. It stretches a little bit. Now I'm, now I'm rambling because these little turd nuggets, or this, this little turd nuggets, you get them fired up and he just goes crazy. All right, let's just, oh, over there, right there. Stay there. I'm getting dog hair all over it. So that's why you see me bring out uh, certain things time and time again. This sleeping bag, is it's the only one I got. I mean, yeah, I'd like a nice down bag that compresses to here and it'll keep you extremely warm and negative 60 degree temperatures, but I'm not willing to fork out that kind of cash for a sleeping bag. They're so expensive. This thing is 60 bucks, 60, 80 bucks, whatever, used, does its job. Just gotta deal with the bulk. And also, the great great. I mean, look at this thing. Look at how slim its profile is. And it's light. That's why I use this a lot and bring it. This thing was, it's a Coglin's Pat Grill. Six bucks, you know, and this thing has been used for it's lasted for years. I love this thing. This thing is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put it in a little case on the wall if it ever breaks or something, you know? But anyways, um, and another thing I wanted to touch on is you don't, I don't always bring out the same things every time. Now this right here, this, uh, this package of cookware, this is my go-to uh, cookware. If I, if I need to just get ready quick, I'm going out by myself, I'm cooking an 
extremely gourmet meal and I need all sorts of pots and pans, I'm gonna bring all this. And now I won't bring the grill every, or the uh, stove every time. I will put in, you know, my coffee mug or spices, a lighter, stuff like that. That'll also go inside there instead of the stove. But this is my go-to. Now, I do have bigger pots and pans that I bring out, and that's mostly like, am I bringing a sled that time? Am I gonna go out with a bunch of other people and I need to, we're gonna cook a big stew or something like that. Then I'm gonna bring out different sorts of pots and pans, bigger ones, smaller ones, you know, that sort of thing. But this is my go-to. And that's just, that's just how it takes. It takes years to build your perfect little go-to camping arsenal. And that's just kind of how I built mine. Mine's not complete yet. I've got a set of gear that I guess you could say it's complete. It, it is and it isn't. I'm always upgrading, I'm always changing. Just right now I've got one that I really like and that's what I stick to. When I find something better, I'll add it in, I'll remove something, yada, yada, yada. But that's how it goes and that's, that's part of building your camping arsenal. Take your time, find things you like, find things you don't, something you don't like, change it up, whatever. And it just, you can go to military surplus, little pots and pans, little something you find in your closet that's collected dust, you might be like, wow, that perfectly fits into there, you know? Just just do it like that. And that's how you build it. So um, I guess we'll just go into like a little channel update and then we'll do some unboxing. Um, so I didn't go out in the woods like I said this week. Uh, there was a, a, a semi, I, it was a winter storm, but it it was windy, but there was like no snow here. It it was saying on the weather like up to 15 inches and it just there's no way we got like a dusting like half inch maybe it was just crazy windy and like i just didn't get out in it we were sitting here and it was like i was going to get a late start i would have showed up to where i was going to set up camp at dark and i would have just been setting up pretty much in the dark and i was just like nah <laughs> i'll stay home and cuddle inside you know sometimes that'll happen and it happened this week, right, Rubes? Come here, come here. So, but I will be doing an overnighter this week. Definitely, I want to get back out to my shelter. I am a little bit worried that my shelter may have been destroyed because we had 20 to 30 mile an hour winds with gusts, and yeah, things can happen in the woods and those sort of winds. You remember my shelter was like those trees, and my ridge pole wasn't super long, so if those things sway. It'll just pull out my ridge pole and the whole thing will fall down. Which could totally happen. I could go out there and have just a mess to deal with. But we'll see. Well, maybe we'll get out there. Maybe we'll go do something else. And another thing is Jake Ski Guy is moving back to town for the winter. So I should be doing some adventures with him that I'm pretty pumped about. And I'm hoping to get this hot tent. And we're going to try some kind of crazy multi-night further up north sort of thing. And that's where I got a question for you guys. Um, so I, as you know, I'm trying to get a hot tent and I have two in mind that I wanna get. I wanna get the Nico stove. I think that's the one I'm gonna get. And the hot tent I'm gonna get is either an Esker Arctic Fox or the Lux something or other. And that's what I, I have a question for any of you that, that own either of these, these uh, tents is, uh, I just need to know a little bit more information I've been trying to find online. But basically, it seems like the Lux is cheaper, has much more room, is lighter, but it seems like it's less durable maybe. It's just like tin material. And then the Esker has got that nice canvas, a little heavier, definitely more expensive, but it's got that uh, you know canvas that seems like you could stick a coal on it and it won't burn through it. So. I'm kind of leaning towards the more durable side because I tend to beat on things and ream on them and I'm not super delicate all the time and I don't think I will always be very delicate. So if anyone can confirm that that Lux tent is kind of a tent thin material, that would be very helpful to me because that's I'm on the fence between the two because this one, the uh, Lux is a much cheaper tent and it's got more room and it's lighter so I'm just like, oh that sounds pretty nice. But I want that high quality, no worries that I'm going to, you know, be in a windstorm and it'll tear or something like that. You know, so anybody that's had either experience with either, let me know. Those are the two I'm deciding on. And I do like the Nico stove because I kind of, I don't want one of those little ring ones that are you have to tinker around with. I kind of just want it all set up and I'll just put some stuff inside. 
have it ready to go. New Year's coming. Sorry this is a late video today. Um, you know, I just got up and I'm just making this. I'm going to have to edit it up today, but, you know. I think coming up here soon, I will have produced a video every Sunday for a year. And I haven't missed a Sunday at all, I don't think. I'm pretty sure every Sunday for a year is coming up very soon. And to be honest, January 1st is about when I hit my first 100 subscribers. So most of my subscribers have come in 2018, all the whole year, because I, I was started, you know, October 24th, and then I released a couple videos, and then on 2000 or uh, like January 1st, right around there, Christmas time this year is when I just I hit 100, and then I just went up to a thousand, and then it's just the rest is history. But um, but yeah, every every Sunday for a year, it's been a lot of work. It's been a challenge. Um, you know, there's going to be many more Sundays like this where something doesn't happen and I just chat with you guys and I'm sorry about that. That's just the way it is. That's life. Sometimes I need a break. Sometimes, you know, I'm just not going to make it outside. Something will happen. Yada, yada, yada. It is what it is. Um, and I'm going to try to get more gear, not gear review, but just my gear loadout videos. I'm going to be doing a winter one and a summer one at, at some point here, you know. So with all that being said, let's do a little unboxing. I've got a few things that came right after Christmas, so I thought I'd open them. So we've got one, uh, we have got two letters here and a few packages. This one is from Bum Bum Ama. She is the one that won the second place uh, engraved knife uh, during my most recent giveaway. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Got a little snowman letter. She drew a candle that says peace. Matthew and Aaron and the boys, aka Bonk. Wishing you a happy holiday season and a wonderful new year. I was not sure if Aaron was your name, but on a fishing trip, the two of you took. Uh, Matthew called you that twice. Anyway, just a big thank you again and warm wishes for a blessed, healthy, and happy new year. Your YouTube viewer and friend, Jessica. Thank you very much for the letter, and Happy New Year to you, too. I will show this to Funk. <laughs> That's great. We've got one from Mark. Letter from Mark. I always want to say the last name, but I'm glad I don't. Oh, yeah. Just go ahead. Leave, Monty. Just, just walk away. We got a letter. What is this? Hey, Monty and Ruger. P.S. Have your dad send us airfare and we will come camping with you. <laughs> it's a picture of a bunch of dogs. What do you think about that, Rugs? Can you smell the other dogs? Ooh, this just gave me an idea. Someone should uh, make a scratch and sniff dog picture that smells like other animals to make your dogs go crazy. <laughs> I think there's a letter in here. There's a few things in here. What do we got going on here? Can't get this letter out. To Monty and Ruger, Shiloh. From Tennessee. Mary Christine. <laughs> I think that's a picture of Mark's dog. Shiloh. <laughs> what do you think, Rooks? Monty's not impressed. You see that? Ruger's a little intrigued. Thank you for the insert. Thank you for the pictures. Is there a letter in here? Oh, money order. Hi, Monty and Ruger. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's great. What is this? I think we got stamps here for the American Kennel Club. Huh. Yeah, so so Mark, if you're watching this, uh, let me know what these are. I think they're stamps. I'm not 100% sure. They look like stamps to me. 
Beagle, beagle stamps. Or maybe these are stamps of your dog. Maybe. Let's, let's see. Nope. They are not. Anyways, guys, thank you for the letters and thank you, Mark, for the donation. Thank you very much. Let us open a package from Amazon here. What do we got? Yeah. We've got from Steve. Hello, happy holidays. I believe this will help with camp cooking. What I like about mine is I never overcook the meats or as often you can check internal temperature. So we've got a instant read thermometer. Awesome. I love these. I don't like the digital ones. Got a little case. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it works pretty quick. It's reading the temperature of my fingers. What's this for? Hmm. Interesting. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. We've got something else here. I think it's another Amazon one. Yep. What do we got here? What are these? Work gloves. Waterproof winter work gloves. Where, who are these from? It does not say. That is one thing that upsets me about the Amazon is when it doesn't say who it's from. I like to know. We've got some Pro Series. It says they're waterproof. I'll give them a try. <laughs> awesome. Let's see if they fit. They look like they'll fit. They look like they will fit. High Dex gloves. These are Yeti Pro Series. It says they're warm. Confront the cold. They look waterproof. Will they fit? Ooh, they just fit. Oh yeah, they look pretty tough. Right, Rooks? Awesome. There we go. Yeah, they, they seem like they'll they'll stretch out a little bit. They're pretty close. Almost almost too small right here. It's my fingers are very long. I've got very big hands. What size are these? XL. It's close. They'll, they'll definitely stretch. It should work, but I'll definitely throw my pack. Give them a try. Um, they feel waterproof. They look waterproof. I hope it's not the neoprene. I hope they're actually waterproof. Maybe I'll just dunk it in some water and we'll find out for sure. But thank you very much. Whoever sent them, I'm sorry. Amazon did not feel like telling me who sent these gloves, but thank you. Okay, and we've got one more here. It does not say who it is from. It does not say. We'll just use this here. What are you doggies doing? What you dogs doing? this is from no well thank you whoever sent this one let's check this out solo stove two pot set see shenazi
Okay, so now this this sort of stuff. Now that's a nice thick aluminum bottom. This will be nice for a camp cook when I'm bringing out other people. This will definitely be nice. Now, what'll be really nifty is if this close, my other stuff will nest in here. Yeah. Now this will actually be nice. This will this will nest the other stuff, and I'll give this definitely give this a try. This looks like it'll definitely hold more liquid than my other stove, and it's got a lid, so that is nice. Sweet. Yeah, I like that. Now we'll give that a try. This we got a big boy in here too. Oh, nice! It's got a pot hanger too. Now that's nice. I like when they come with the pot hanger handle. I don't have many like this. And it's got the big side. This will be great for cooking uh, like a big stew or something when I bring out a bunch of people. This is a little, this is pretty big for just by myself. I'm probably never gonna be, you know, unless I'm boiling snow, but when I'm by myself, you know, I don't need that much super stew. But if, you know, when you're bringing pots this size, it's it's hard to put these in your pack, so when I bring my sled, it's much easier to bring like things like this. And it's not it's not crazy heavy. This is three liters. Awesome. That's pretty sweet. Dang nabbit! It stopped recording again. I always <laughs> I always miss when this thing is not recording. There's a little there's a little red record button, and I just it it's it's blending in with the wall a little bit. Something back there. Is blending in so I can't I, sometimes I forget I'm recording but anyways though so I just want to say again thank you very much for the letters and the gifts guys uh, sorry I didn't make it out in the woods this week life happens and you're you know you're gonna get stuck with a little video like this sometimes and then you go little Monty here is gonna get tossed and turned around like a big stuffed animal right are you a stuffed animal Ugh. Raise the roof, raise the roof, raise the roof. I'm swimming. <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Uh, have a happy new year, and I will catch you guys at the next video. Bye-bye.